By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are looking at a game between my um, Sleeping Beauty deck. It's white, it's green, it's got a lot of walls in it and four Fajuran Enchantresses. It's really a deck that I love to play. And I'm playing against a Hazazon of Tamar deck. And this is a special episode because it's only one game. But I still decided to put it on the channel. Why? Well, because the game is just a really cool game to watch. And last but not least, the main reason to do this is because the deck, the Hazazon Tamar deck, is just so cool. It's made by Frank. And I just want to show it to you guys. I want to talk about it. I want your opinion about this. Hassazon is cool and I think this deck is perfect for it. So, um, you know, I'm just going to go straight over to the deck deck. Uh, just one little thing. If you want to skip the deck deck, first go to the games and maybe then watch the deck deck or skip it all together. Um, you can do that quite easily. Uh, check the description below. There you will find different timestamps. One of them reads MTG Games. Click on there. That will take you straight to the action. And as for here, we are going to continue with the deck deck. I'm actually going to start with my deck, and after that, I'm going to look at the beautiful Hazazon deck. So now let's take a look at Sleeping Beauty. And this is the deck that I am playing with today. This is my Sleeping Beauty deck. It's green and it's white. And um, it's a deck that I've actually made some changes to. There are three new cards that have joined this deck. That's the Soul Ring and that's a Regrowth. For those two cards, I took out a Basic Forest and a Basic Plains. And I've taken out the Fortified Area, um, unfortunately, to put in a Diamond Valley. And I'm super happy to own a Diamond Valley. I was able very recently to trade into one. And uh, you know who you are, you know. Um, I just want to thank you very much for thinking with me and not against me, for looking for my binder, for trying to come up with a solution. Um, as you know, the price of Diamond Valley, you probably know the price of Diamond Valley just skyrocketed. And uh, I mean, I wouldn't be able to get it for the, the current price. So I'm just very thankful that, uh, that somebody was out there uh, willing to find a solution. You know who you are. Thank you. Thank you very much. And it also shows the generosity that is in the old school community because there actually is a lot of generosity in our beautiful community. Okay, enough said about Diamond Valley and those cards. So those cards are new. Let's now take a look at what this deck wants to do you know what's the goal of this deck well first off it starts with the engine of the deck the engine of the jack deck are the four for journey enchantresses right i want to get them out as soon as possible because what they do they allow me to draw into my cards for journey enchantress two green and one for every enchantment that you cast it's an o2 for every enchantment that you cast you get to draw a card right so i get to draw into a card then hopefully I get to draw into another Fajuran Enchantress. And when I have two Fajuran Enchantresses on the board, for each one enchantment that I play out, I get to draw two more cards instead of one. Talking about like drawing cards and selecting cards, Sylvan Library is actually quite important in this strategy. The Sylvan is going to allow me to sift through my deck to finding the cards that I need to kind of make that card selection that I need, right? So once I've got that whole card drawing, card sifting engine going, I can start playing out my walls. So I'm playing with tons and tons of walls in this deck. The walls are protecting me. They're protecting me. They're protecting my life total. They're making sure I cannot die. And in that process, they're also buying me timer right? so I can draw into other useful cards. Uh, for example, the animate wall. So animate wall, look, here it is. I mean, that art is just so extremely goofy with that wall. I'm not sure if the wall is angry and wants to bash or if the wall is angry that the wizard kind of woke the wall up the wall's like oh what what do i gotta do what do i gotta do you know i want to smash so that's kind of i always felt that was kind of funny very very comical art so um i can then attack with my wall right and deal a little bit of damage but that's not my a plan my a plan is actually a two sword of the ages that you see there i've got two lovely italian copies sword of the ages from legends six to cast comes into play tapped when you untap it, you can tap it again at any time and sack an X amount of creatures. You also got to sack the sword, by the way. And um, you can deal X amount of damage to any target, so to your choice, equal to all the power combined of all the creatures that you sacrificed to the Sword of the Ages. So, for example, if I would sacrifice a carnivorous plant and a wall of swords, they have, I believe, seven power in total. I can deal seven damage to any target. Now, I'm also playing with Fortified Area. Fortified Area is giving all my walls plus one plus all, right? So my walls are getting beefed up a little bit. So I want to combine that with a lot of walls 
and my sword of the ages and just in one huge swing with my with my ancient sword i want to kill my opponent right that's kind of the main plan that's the main goal to kind of help me with that and kind of keep thinking about that sword theme that's in my deck right i've got this card this is a badass this is akron legionnaire he's eight four i know he's eight mana but still he's got eight power which is huge right so if i can sack my sword and sack akron legionnaire to my sword i mean that's insane i can deal eight damage and also look at the art of akron legionnaire he's basically holding the sword in his hand like all this makes sense and then i can sack a wall of swords and an Akron Legionnaire to the sword, and it's a huge sword, and well, you get the idea, right? You get the picture. That's how I want to kill my opponent. That is the goal. Now, um, before we go to the deck of Frank, which is amazing, the Hazazan deck, uh, just just a little thing here. I'm thinking about taking out my um, my dust to dust, putting it in the sideboard, and actually putting in a Skull of Orm. So I can get get back uh, enchantments. I'm also thinking about taking out one wild growth to possibly take in, uh, put in the other fortified area again, the second fortified area, just because fortified area actually in this deck is pretty cool because it doesn't only give plus one plus oh, it also gives my walls banding, making them incredibly efficient as blockers. And yes, this deck is really afraid of juggernaut. There are still decks that are afraid of juggernaut. This deck is one of them. Okay. This is the deck that I'm playing with today. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think of it. Now let's take a look at the deck of Frank and his Hazazan Brew. Let's go. And here we see the deck of Frank, Crusaders in Holy Land. Now this deck is completely built around the card Hazazan of Damar. So it might be good to first zoom into that card before we discuss uh, the rest of the deck. So what does Hazazan of Damar do? Well, we have him on the screen in front of us. As you can see, he's got a hefty casting cost. One red, one green, one white, and four to cast for a summon legend. It's a 2-4 creature. But what it does, that is the important thing. Because when it comes into play, right? Let's let's just read the text on the card. On your next upkeep, after Hazazan is put into play, put X token sand warriors into play, where X is the number of lands under your control. Treat the warriors as 1-1 one, one white, green, and red creatures. If Hazazan leaves play, all sand warriors are also removed from the game. Now, what you can do with this card, and this is why it's so unique, you can play Hazazan of Tamar. When it comes into play, the uh, there's a trigger that goes on the stack, and that is on your next upkeep, after Hazazan is put into play, put X token stand warriors into the game, right, on the battlefield. And X is the number of lands. Now, what you can do is you can play Hazazan, then before it's your next upkeep, you can bounce Hazazan back to your hand, and your sand warrior tokens will still appear during your next upkeep, but... Um, they won't disappear because Hazazan is not on the board. So what you basically do is you play your Hazazan of Tamar, you bounce it back to your hand, then your next upkeep, you get a ton of Sand Warrior tokens, and they're not vulnerable at all because Hazazan of Tamar is not in the game, right? So usually what keeps the card Hazazan of Tamar kind of balanced is you play it out, you get a ton of creatures, but if your opponent is able to remove Hazazan of the game, all the Sand Warrior tokens die as well. But when you, for example, use Caracas to bounce Hazazan back to your hand before your next upkeep, you still get the Sand Warrior tokens, but they're not vulnerable anymore because Hazazan of Tamar is not in the game. And that is exactly what Frank is, is, is aiming for, you know, what he wants to do. Another really cool thing about Hazazan is that the Sand Warrior tokens are not colorless. As a matter of fact, they've got three different colors, right? They're white, they're green, and they're red. So that means that specific cards are now useful. For example, the Gauntlet of Might says all red creatures gain plus one, plus one. Well, guess what? The Sand Warrior token is also a red creature. The card Jihad from Arabian Nights says, you know, three white to cast, choose a color. As long as opponent has cards of, the, of this color in play, all white creatures gain plus two, plus one. Wait a minute, the Sand Warrior tokens are also white. So in an ideal scenario, he will have um, Gauntlet of Might. He will have Jihad on the board. That means all his Sand Warrior tokens get plus three, plus two. And he will also be able to bounce his Hazazan of Tamar. And guess what? The next turn, of course, he can play it again. He can bounce it again. He can generate even more tokens, right? So this is kind of like this insane token trip. Now, the problem, of course, is that this is going to cost him a lot of mana. And he also needs to find the right cards. So if we kind of look into his deck, what did he do 
to kind of, you know, be able to find the right cards, find the right mana, and basically postpone the game, right? Because Hazard Zone is a lot of mana, so you want to, the game to go into late game. So what he's done, he's playing two Wall of Stone. I think that's just so cool. It's so flavorful. So he's playing two Wall of Stone, two red and one for an 08 wall. So that can kind of hold back some of the creatures. He's also playing with a creature that I think is a little bit underestimated, Dancing Scimitar. Dancing Scimitar is four colorless to cast. Ideal in, in this deck because you get so many different colors of mana. You don't want to have like a Sarah Angel with double white. You don't want to do that, right? So the four colorless... That is ideal in this deck. And then what do you get for that? You get a 1-5 Flyer. So that's a card that you can use to poke a little bit if you want to, but it's just ideal. It's an all-star on defense because of that 5 toughness. It flies. It can basically block almost everything in uh, in old school. So that is really, really ideal. Um, another thing that he's playing with are four Untamed Wilds. So Untamed Wilds, really cool card. Beautiful art by Nene Thomas. Uh, it's a card from Legends, one green and two, and it's one of the uh, only mana fixing cards that we actually have in the game. And it allows you to look up a basic land of your choice and put that into play straight away. So actually, it's one green and two to cast, that's true, but you get a land of your choice back straight away that you can tap for mana as well. So you could say it's only one green and one, right, in, in, in that perspective. And the nice thing here is it's so hard to cast Hazazan because you need three different colors of mana, right? But when you've got your Untamed Wilds, you can just pick the basic land that you still need, and that will going to get you closer. Another great thing in the whole world of mana fixing, of course, is the Black Lotus. You know, an uh, insanely powerful card, and it's going to give Frank the ramp that he needs to play Hazazon early, but also the colors that he needs to play Hazazon early. Talking about colors that you need, of course, he's playing with the three Moxen, the Mox Pearl, the Mox Ruby, and the Mox Emerald. So um, that will make him the colors that he needs. Um, one of the best cards in, in, in old school magic to kind of uh, sift through your deck is Sylvan Library. So I'm not surprised to see two Sylvan Libraries in this deck. He really wants to find specific cards to do what he wants to do. And I'm also not surprised that he's playing with that white control package. I mean, you need your Swords to Plows here. You need your Disenchants to kind of be, you know, business-like. Have the control that you're able to stretch the game into that mid-game, late-game. So I really understand why Frank has chosen to go with Four Swords and Four Disenchants. Also, Disenchant, of course, a key card when you have to deal with cards like the Abyss, cards with Moat, you know? So I think Disenchant here uh, is, is, is quite important uh, for Frank. Okay, so take another good look at this deck. I really, really, really like it. There are still things we haven't discussed yet, I know, um, but this is it for my deck deck at least. I would just suggest to, to pause the button and, and if you can, copy this deck because, uh, it, yeah, it is just so cool and so much fun to play against. Uh, so this is the deck of Frank and now we're going to go to the game. Let's go. Let's get ready to rumble. Here we go. I'm on the play, it seems, playing a Soul Ring turn one. That's perfect. So maybe turn two, I can already play a Wall of Swords. Let's see what my opponent can do here. Starting with a Zavanna and there's also a Soul Ring. Okay, untapping here, playing a forest. There is, oh, nice. Carnivorous plant, four, five wool from the dark. One of the strongest walls in the game of old school. There is a mountain, basic mountain. Tapping for three. And okay, there's an untamed wild. It's kind of hard to see there, but it's going through the deck, so with Untamed Wilds, he can look up any basic land of his choice, put it into play untapped. He's looking for a mountain, so I assume he's got a wall of stone in hand. Then that mountain would make sense. There's a savanna on my side, and passing turn. There is a Diamond Valley or not. Okay, he's leaving it on the field. What is he going to do? And of course, the nice thing here, ooh, there's a Disenchant. And a wall of stone there. Disenchant on my soul ring. The nice thing here for Frank, of course, is that um, my deck is just not really a deck that puts you under pressure. So you have all the time in the world to do whatever you want, <laughs> which which makes it a kind of mediocre, you know, against uh, kind of decks that that want to do something more like co combo decks, I guess. Uh, playing a fortified area here. That means that my uh, my wall there becomes a five five now instead of a 4-5. So all my walls gain plus 1, plus 0, oh, and uh, banding. 
I just love the art on uh, Fortified Area. Tapping four, there is a Dancing Scimitar, so he can start pinging away on my life total. And I guess that's the only good news for me in this game so far, is that I'm still on 20, so I'm still pretty much going. What I need to find here is a Fujuran Enchantress or a Sylvan Library, just something to, you know, to draw more and do more in my turns and just uh, play a land and pass. Probably gonna get an attack here and go into 19 because of that Dancing Scimitar. Let's see what Frank can do. He's got so much mana already. There is a Desert Twister on my dual land. And now I'm playing a Wild Grove just to make sure that I can still make green mana after my last forest uh, maybe gets destroyed as well. Just want to make sure I can still make green. So that's why I'm playing out the Wild Grove or you know, I would have uh, kept it in hand. There's a Dishenchant actually on the Wild Grove. So he's making sure I cannot play out my Fragurn. That's a, that's a pretty good strategy. And playing another Wild Grove. So preferably I want to keep those Wild Groves in hand until I draw into a Fajuran Enchantress. Or of course play them out if I want to ramp into something bigger. And uh, looking at my hand at the moment. Taking another hit by the Dancing Scimitar by the way. And we see a second Dancing Scimitar now as well. So it's starting to get uh, a little bit painful for me. Would be nice if I could draw into a Wall of Swords, playing a Sword of the Ages. Interesting choice here, since I don't have a lot of creatures to sacrifice it to. So here's another attack, going to 15. Let's see what I can do. Another Plains. It looks like I'm just drawing into tons and tons of land, which is not ideal. I really need a Sylvan... Okay, this is something at least, playing a Spirit Link on one of the Dancing Scimitars. So that's going to stop the bleeding a little bit. Remember with Spirit Link, you do take the damage first. Uh, and after that, you gain the life. Okay, there is a Fajurian Enchantress. Hopefully for me, I still have some enchantments in hand. Another attack going down to 13, taking on my turn. And playing another Wild Grove. That's number three already. Drawing a card for that because of the Enchantress. Look, now it's kind of going Animate Wall, drawing again. Unfortunately for me, that animate wall is not flying. I mean, the uh, um, the 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 plant is not flying. That would have been ideal. There is a disenchant, and of course, in response, he's going to sack it to the Diamond Valley, gaining five life. The Diamond Valley, what a card! What a card! And playing out another wild growth. So now I drew into all four of my wild growths. Well, good for me. At least I get to draw a card for it. Let's see what else I can do. Playing a Spirit Link on my Carnivorous Plant here. So I've got a Spirit Link. I've got, <laughs> I've got an Animate Wall. Oh man, the Carnivorous Plant is feeling lively, you know? It's like spirited, it's animated. It, you know, it wants to get into action. So I'm attacking, he's blocking with his uh, Wall of Stone. How cool is that? Really a wall battle. And that's gave, giving me five life. Because remember, I also have the Fortified Area. So that means I'm going back up to 18 again. And there is a disenchant on the spirit link. And now he's just going to block it and nothing else happens. And oh, look at this. I'm actually sacking my Sword of the Ages. Sacking my other carnivorous plant to kill his uh, Wall of Stone. Playing another spirit link. So I really want to keep pressure here on uh, Frank. And hopefully my, uh, my wall stays alive. It looks like it. Maybe now I can finally deal some debt. No, I cannot. Okay. Unfortunately, I was living the dream and the dream got cancelled. Thank you for that, Frank. The wall is a goner. Look at my life total. I'm on 21 and Frank is on, what is he on? 28? The ridiculously high life total. Or 25, probably 25 because he used that... Um... Oh, of course, he wasn't 25. Then he sacked his wall of stone when I tried to kill it to the Diamond Valley as well. So he's probably on 33 right now. Wow, that's insane. Things are getting out of hand for me, and I'm giving Frank so much time. It's just a matter of time before he starts playing his Hazazan. And, uh, yeah, we're both just kind of drawing our cards, waiting for something to happen here in this game. And I was trying to put some pressure on, at least finding a Wall of Swords here, which is a 4-5 because of the fortified area. There is a Dancing Scimitar. One five flyer from the Arabian Nights. 
going to go through my deck, so I guess I've got a regrowth there, but what to regrowth? Maybe an enchantment and then just draw into another card? Looks like I've put Spirit Link on the top, not sure why. I think if I have a regrowth, I would probably regrowth Animate Wall, although he's got blockers for that. It's difficult, it's difficult. And it looks like he's casting another Untamed Waz, putting some more land on the battlefield. If he can cast a Hazes, and he's going to get 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 13, 1, 1 Sand Warrior tokens. are pretty much toast. And look at that, Regrowth onto Animate Wall. I just want to do something, you know, I just want to draw into something. Uh, okay, finding a second for Jurn. That's not too bad, actually. I really need to find some more enchantments to get drawing into something more. Remember, I play with two Sword of the Ages and tons and tons of walls still, so I got enough to draw into. But it is looking difficult because, you know, my opponent is on 33. I mean, those Diamond Valleys are difficult to play against. Oh, look at that! Dust to dust. This is great for me, and I'm able to, to hit. Look, he's going to sack, of course, his Diamond Valleys. Uh, use his Diamond Valleys to sack his Dancing Scimitars. So he's on a ton of life, but at least I get to attack. I get to deal some damage. Uh, I think he's on, what, um, 44? Is he on 44? That's just insane. I have no idea what he's on. Those dice are too small, but he's on a lot. We'll see whatever happens. At least I get to attack with a, with a wall of swords. I mean, how cool does it get, right? And, I mean, I wonder what Frank's got in his hand, because it's, it's full of cards there. Looks like he doesn't really have anything. Maybe just a bunch of lands, and I think that's a Jihad in hand there. And playing another, playing a Silva. No, oh, first playing a Fajuran, and then I'm playing a Silva. Look, now we're talking about something. Now it's working. An Ancestral Recall for one Sylvan Library. This is what you want to have in life. Playing another Animate Wall, drawing three more cards. Okay, now I should be able to put some pressure on. Attack on the both of my walls. Remember, they get plus one, plus O from Fortified Area. So I'm actually dealing um, seven damage here with one blow. Those walls, man, they're attacking. Playing my final sword out. Not sure if that's the right strategy. Maybe I've got some other big creatures. Oh, disenchant on that sword. That's bad news for me. Remember, already played out my regrowth. And um, I actually said in the deck deck that I still needed to fit in um, the regrowth and the um, and the soaring. I guess I already did. I'm not sure what I took out though. That's always a hard question, right? What to put in is easy. What to take out is hard. I think I took out a fortified area and maybe another land because I was playing with quite a lot of lands. And look at what I'm doing now: playing a carnivorous plant and attacking again because uh, my wall of swords got flying. Another animate wall. Wow. Yeah, I mean, he's pointing out to my Fajurans. This is insane, insane value. Unfortunately for me, that second sword got disenchanted by Frank, and I think that's going to be a huge problem for me because look at Frank's life total. He's up so high, and of course, I'm dealing four damage a turn with the Wall of Swords, but I'm pretty sure it's going to draw into something to block that. And look at that, another Dancing Scimitar. That's actually enough because it's got five defense, and my Wall of Swords is a 4-5. Of course I can attack in a huge band now, actually, that I think about it. I can band Wall of Swords, Wall of Brambles, and Carnivorous Plant. That would be cool. I hope I'm seeing that. I hope I'm seeing that. Because of Fortified Area, my walls actually get banding. Oh, yeah, I'm attacking in a band. Look at that. <laughs> go, go, go. I'm banding, right? Yeah, that's so cool. It's a huge band. This is so funny. And he's just putting his wall in front of it and actually gaining eight life because of Diamond Valley. Okay, who cares? But I'm bad. How often? Let me know in the comments. Have you ever banded a wall of sorts, wall of brambles, and a carnivorous plant? Seriously, have you ever? If so, let me know in the comments. I'll send you a Timmy pin. Because I think that's worth a Timmy pin. If you ever did that. Oh, man, that was just too hilarious. Let's hope that Frank cannot do anything. If he finds a Hazazan, he gets so many chump blockers. I'm basically nowhere. I need a card that gives all walls trample. That's what I need. Drawing into a card. I need to actually be cautious. Ooh, finding my Diamond Valley. I need to be cautious about my cards, by the way, because I've been drawing so many cards. Look at my library. My library is thinning out quickly. There is a Swords. 
on my wall of sorts. Is that the sorts on my wall of sorts? Or not? I'm a little confused. Maybe he was showing something out of his graveyard. So I'm attacking in a band. And the carnivorous plant as a solo one. Oh, okay, he's, he's playing the sorts later. Okay, now he's playing the sorts. Actually, she'd, yeah, I'm sacking it. Thank you. I'm sacking it to the Diamond Valley. Not making any mistakes. Gaining even more life. We're just on so much life. This game is going to take forever. I mean, look at Frank. Even though I've attacked him basically nonstop with my animate wall army, he's still on, what, 25? Maybe more even? I mean, this is just... I think I'm going to deck myself in this game. I mean, maybe I'm going to die to a huge army of Sand Warrior tokens if he ever draws into this Hazazon. I do believe he plays with the Hazazon, right? Two in the deck. Wow, and another Swords. This is really bad for me. I mean, I'm gaining tens of life, but who cares? Oh, Akron Legionnaire. That is cool. Maybe he ran out of Swords and I can attack with my Akron Legionnaire. That would be so cool. I'm really I'm keeping my fingers crossed here. I'm hoping that he doesn't have another sword so I can swing in with my 8-4 Akron Legionnaire. There's the Caracas. Oh, there's Hazazan at Tamar. Oh, this is bad news. Remember, Hazazan uh, is a card when it comes into play. It says during your next upkeep, you're going to get X Sand Warrior token. So he's got, um, and the X is uh, depending on the amount of lands you have. So each land is one uh, Sand Warrior token. He's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. He's got 19, I think, maybe 20. So he gets... 19 Sand Warrior tokens, and now he can use his... I'm actually attacking here, that's fun. I'm attack, swinging in with the Colossus. But now he's using his Caracas to bounce back the Hazazan, and that means he gets tons and tons of Sand Warrior tokens, and he can play the Hazazan again, and he can bounce it again, and he can do that over and over and over and over. So basically, I'm dead right now. That's the conclusion. Maybe if I draw into a Balance, although Balance is not going to be... It's not even going to be great because when I play balance, he can simply send his houses on back with the Caracas and he's not even going to lose that many Sand Warrior tokens because look at how many cards I have. I've got one, two, three, four, five. I've got eight creatures myself. He's got two, four, six, eight, ten Sand Warrior tokens. Okay. I wonder why he only has ten of them. He should get more, right? Or is it just... Or non-basics not included. Anyway, he's got tons of Sand Warrior tokens. I kind of feel like I'm dying right now. Because he's going to play his Hazazan again. And also look at my library again, right? My library is so thinned out. I'm pretty sure Frank's not... Not, you know, that he doesn't have that many cards in the library still. But, I mean... Ooh! There's his Gauntlet of Might. That means all his creatures gain plus one, plus one. So the, all those 1-1 one, one tokens, because they're also red or now 2-2 two, two tokens. So his, his army just got a lot more scary than what it was before the gauntlet came into play. This is a big problem. I mean, I can attack with my with my 8-4, but he can simply block it on two Sand Warrior tokens. Oh man, my poor Akron Legionnaire. Okay, playing out two more and... Oh yeah, playing a balance. Okay, that makes sense. Only one card in hand. But the problem is... I've got so many creatures. He's not actually going to lose. Them. Look at it. Only losing two Sand Warrior tokens. That's like nothing. And he's probably going to keep his houses on, right? I cannot imagine that he's going to discard his houses on of Tamar. So I'm actually asking like how many... How many creatures are you going to get next turn? And we're... I think we're now at a point where I'm discussing... Frank, can you be honest with me? Can I actually still... You know, is there a way for me to win this? I think what I could have done is kind of kept the balance in hand, hoping that he would swing in with all the warrior tokens, just make really, really bad blocks. First of all, get all my enchantresses killed, right? Um, and then maybe after that, play the balance. But it's tough because my walls don't really die to 2-2 two, two sand warrior tokens. It's difficult. The problem is, because I'm lower on cards in my library, I'm actually the player that has to find a way to victory here, not Frank, because I'm just going to deck myself anyway. I really need to get that sword back from my graveyard, but I already played my regrowth. It's probably just going to play out the Hazazan again. 
And there is the last card. Of course, he had to discard a lot of cards because of the balance. But of course, he kept the Hazasan. Remember, uh, with that land, with Caracas, he can just bounce back the Hazasan whenever it's under threat. So in response to, for example, a sword, he can bounce it back. What I would need is kind of like a disrupting scepter, right? Playing, uh, playing my swords. Yeah, so I'm going through the cards here. I'm saying, look, I've got how many cards? I had seven. I've got seven more turns. What do you have? Yeah, and it's it's done. It's done. I'm also showing what I still have in my deck. It's it's nothing. <laughs> okay. Wow. What a game. What a game. I kind of knew in the game at a certain point where you know Frank was gaining so much life from the Diamond Valleys. I kind of knew. Okay, this is going to be really tough because dealing damage with my wall deck that's not really what it's made for you know it's not really made to make damage um anyway i had tons and tons of fun playing this game and uh, frank just thank you very much for bringing such a creative and innovative deck to the table and i also would like to thank you for watching another episode of timmy talks let me know if you've ever played with hazazan of tamar if you've ever played with animate wall uh, I would love to hear from you. Um, and um, yeah, we'd just like to thank you in general for, of course, watching another video. And what I usually say, and I'm going to say that now as well, if you want to support the channel, there are a few things you can do for free. Uh, what you can do is leave a like, hit that thumbs up button. It really means a lot to me. And more importantly, it means a lot to YouTube. Also, you can subscribe. If you're not a subscriber yet, please consider becoming a sub. It really helps as well. And also you can leave a comment and share this video on your socials. If you think this is such a cool game, share it with your friends, share it on your socials and help Timmy Talks grow as a channel. Talking about helping the channel, you can also become a patron and you can also become a patron for one dollar a month. And then you can join the Timmy Talks Discord. And there's all other stuff going on there as well so consider joining there's an info card popping up right now you can click on the card that will take you to the timmy talks patreon page for now thank you very much for watching we are going to go to the end scroll and take a look at all the fantastic amazing channel members and patrons of timmy talks Ik het als fikker te samba kan zien.